Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another live stream show. That's right. It is time for that live stream show. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It is another happy Sunday night here at Hubbard's Marina, and we have started our live stream show. This happens every Sunday night right here at Hubbard's Marina. We are getting ready for that live stream show. Don't forget to check it out and share with your friends, guys. It is Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. Hubbard's Marina has been fishing local waters since 1928. And tonight we've got our live stream show going on. We are going to be talking all about nearshore and offshore fishing tips, tricks, and more. And we're looking forward to having you guys join us and talking fishing. So don't forget to comment where you're watching from. Don't forget to share this video with friends. Don't forget to grab your drink. We are going to be starting here in about 10 minutes or so. I've got a new uh, setup here at Hubbard's or at at Hubbard's Marina Studios, <laughs> and I wanted to make sure I started early because if we had any problems, that would give me a few seconds to go fix it, but it looks like everything's running smoothly, so we did start a little early. It is not going to actually, video's not going to start till 8.30, so we got about 10 minutes, so if you're watching live, just bear with us. Go grab a drink, go use the bathroom, go make some popcorn, be back in 10 minutes. If you're not watching live, you can skip forward to where you see the video start. Again, if you're watching live, we're going to be starting in about 10 minutes. If you're not watching live, skip forward to where you see the video start. Don't forget, again, make sure you tell your friends about the show. Make sure you guys comment where you're watching from. That is how you're entered to win those free fishing trips. So make sure to comment where you're watching from on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook video. That enables you to have that chance to win free trips. Uh, we are gonna get started here shortly. We've got great show lined up for you tonight, guys. Got lots of fun stuff to talk about. And uh, got a cool video of a sailfish that we caught on our 39 hour trip. Uh, Captain Garrett and the boys just got back in this morning and uh, we're going to be sharing that sailfish video. We're going to be uh, showing all the cool photos of the fish we've been catching lately and of course talking about all the things coming up here at Hubbard's Marina. We are on our last week of red snapper season. That's right, red snapper season is almost over. Uh, so that's kind of sad news, but we've also got amberjack season after this week, so it's bittersweet news. Still got stuff to fish for out there. The gag grouper bite is going well. I've seen some red grouper, but I'm not going to get into it too much because I don't want to give away all the great stuff we're going to talk about tonight in the show. Don't forget you can uh, text your questions. If you have a question to ask for the show, the only way I will be able to see your questions is if you text that phone number in the upper right hand corner. So make sure you text in your questions. That is how you're entered into the question side of this thing. So make sure to text your questions, comment where you're watching from. Don't forget to tell your friends to tune in and uh, share this video. If you're watching on Facebook, make sure you share the video on your timeline and uh, with your favorite fishing group or fishing club. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Something like 70% of the people that watch our videos on YouTube are not subscribed. So make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would highly, highly appreciate it. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you like our page. We are going to start here in the coming weeks, um, making it to where you can only comment on the video if you've liked the page. So only followers will be able to comment here soon. So make sure you like the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page in order to be able to keep commenting 
real important. We've had some issues in the past couple weeks with people commenting on the video who really just kind of distracted us from the awesomeness that is this show. So thinking about making it to where only followers can um, comment. So make sure to follow so that way you don't get uh, kicked out of commenting. All righty. Uh, we are just about ready to start. Remember, if you're not watching live, skip forward to where you see the video start. If you are watching live, we're going to be starting here in about seven minutes. 8.30 p.m. sharp is when we're going to get this show on the road. And if you have a question, don't forget to text your question into our text line. That's in the upper right-hand corner, guys. 727-393-1947. Make sure you text in your questions. And make sure you have your venting tools ready for the show. I've got some venting tools ready. I drank one of mine already, but don't worry. I got, got some more. Gabe, the pressure washing jokes. It's too soon, my man. Too soon for the pressure washing jokes. Crazy. Crazy stuff has gone on since I posted that video. Absolutely nuts. Some of you guys on YouTube uh, have commented about winning free trips. Don't forget, in order to be eligible to win those free trips, you do have to comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hop over to Facebook and find the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page. Make sure to give us a like and then find that live stream video and comment at least one time. You're more than welcome to watch on YouTube. I know some people prefer watching on YouTube, uh, but you have to make sure that you comment at least one time on the Hubbard's Marina live stream in order to be eligible to win. Unfortunately, YouTube's API doesn't communicate with the random comment picker so we cannot give away free trips randomly on YouTube. So definitely make sure to comment one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream in order to be eligible to win. If you're watching live, we're going to be starting here in about five minutes. If you're not watching live, skip forward to where you see the video start. Uh, Barry Long said, perfect place to keep your vending tool is on the rail in your noodle. If only I used a rail noodle, Barry. See, most of us don't use those rail noodles. It always makes me laugh. People always ask, oh, do you sell those noodles for the rail? No, we don't sell the noodles for the rail. We don't sell purse holders either. <laughs> Uh, but we do sell venting tools. Unfortunately, we're sold out of vending tools right now, but they're on order. Don't worry. Ooh, that Jameson is extra good tonight. It's my wife's birthday tomorrow, so I'm off work. So I get to sleep in for once. It's gonna be it's gonna be weird. Probably still gonna wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> I'm late for work. I hate that. Every day off, I wake up at like 4.35 a.m. scared I'm late for work. It's crazy. All right, guys. We are almost there. Three minutes until we start this live stream show. If you're watching live, just three more minutes until the best show of your life ever begins. If you're not watching live, you can skip forward to where you see the video start. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. Like 70% of you guys watching on YouTube are not subscribed. I don't know if that's true on Facebook, but I really hope it's not. <laughs> so make sure if you're watching the show, if you enjoy the show, if you want to win some free trips, make sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, you know, go all out. You know, you got to go, got to go hard to show your support for Hubbard's Marina. That's what drives me to do these shows, you guys, and your support. So I appreciate it. Almost there, guys. Just need 
one or two more minutes and we'll get started. I love the sound the bottle makes. <laughs> that cork top. That's how you know it's good. All right, we are almost there. Make sure you have your venting tools ready. Make sure you have commented at least one time on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook video in order to be eligible to win. And I think I'm ready. It's always funny. I have some time to set up for the show, and then I forget something, and then I'm scrambling. <laughs> All right. So let's start off the show with the video. We're going to get right into the video. Uh, so we caught a cool sailfish on the 39-hour trip. I'm going to show you the video and then tell you the story. Uh, I did not... I did not double check this video for language, so just throwing that out there. Might want to mute it if you got small children with you, because I assume someone somewhere said some vulgar words when they realized they had a sailfish on the line. But let's let's see this video. Who's got the fish on? Nobody. Who's got the fish on? Let me buy it, please. Please let me buy it. We got a sailfish on. No, that's who who's who's got the sailfish on? Oh, okay. Let me buy it, please. Thank you. Man's got a sailfish on. There he is. Yeah, he's got it. He's coming up. I got the camera. I'm got the camera right here. Someone got a gas? And there it is. There's the sailfish catch. And it was successfully released as well, which is the best part of that story. Uh, it was wrapped up pretty good around its bill. We were able to use a gaff to unwrap the fish, get it released, and then it was tail wrapped. So I had to get that line out of there too. But she swam off strong, so pretty cool catch on that 39-hour trip. And ironically, not catch or not caught on a... Uh, vertical jig uh, and also not caught on a knocker rig, not caught vertical jigging or flat lining. Uh, it was caught dropping a live bait to bottom uh, and uh, it ate the sail it ate the live bait on the way to bottom. so that was pretty ironic and uh, a unique highlight to that 39 hour trip uh, sailfish pretty cool. But let's get into what we've been catching inshore, show you some of these inshore photos and uh, what's been going on inshore around Hubbard's Marina. Uh-oh. Right, the photo's coming up. See what I mean? Had a minute to get ready for the show and all of a sudden doesn't want to cooperate. There it goes. <laughs> all right, so the mangrove snapper bite has been really, really good lately. Been catching a lot of mangroves around the structure. Thanks, Kyle, for sending some stars on Facebook. Really appreciate it. That goes right into uh, the Jameson Fund. <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, and let's see, what else have we been catching? Some more mangrove snapper. The mangrove snapper are all over the structures right now. Docks, piers, bridges, jetties. 
Uh, all great places to catch those mangrove snapper, and they're so thick right now. Uh, we're even seeing them out on the grass flats. This is our good buddy Joe Simons from Salt Strong showing off a mangrove snapper he caught on a soft plastic jig working the flats. Our friend Steve Klott from Salt Strong showing off a nice red on the flats. Our buddy John Sasser, one of his many big snook that he catches around John's Pass at night. And this is Luke Simon's better half showing off a nice snook she caught out on the beach. John Sasser and another big old snook in John's Pass. Nice triple tail. The triple tail bite's been going up good around the bay. Uh, Joe Simons with a nice trout. Trout bite's been going really well around the edges of the grass flats. Been seeing some nice trout at night around the bridge lights too. Uh, so good active mangrove snapper and snook fishing at night and during the day. Thanks Justin and Barbara for the stars. Really appreciate it. Uh, Christine Srock with some stars as well. Really appreciate the support guys. Uh, let's get into the Nearshore Report. Let's see here, the Nearshore Report. Uh, also, before we get to that, I'm seeing a few comments where people are asking questions. In order to get your questions read during the show, guys, you got to text that phone number. Some people are asking a question and then putting their phone number. you got to take out your phone and text this number right here, 727-393-1947. Text us at that number. Your question will be added to our text line, and then I can answer it. So make sure if you have a question, text it to that phone number. Okay, guys? So near shore, the near shore bite's been okay lately. It's been a little hit and miss. The weather, uh, that rain really kind of mixed things up and uh, made the fishing a little bit tougher than we would have liked uh, towards the beginning of this week, especially when that weather was around. We just weren't able to get out there to them. Uh, but the fishing is getting better. Today's 10-hour all-day did pretty good out there. Saw some nice mangrove snapper on the 10-hour all-day today. That's a pretty big nearshore mangrove snapper there. Nice big old keeper red grouper. Some nice red groupers. Nice mahi-mahi. That's a big old mahi for nearshore 10-hour all-day fishing. Uh, we've been seeing some nice red grouper on our private charters. This is a 30, I think it was 34, 36 inch red grouper. This young angler caught, went out fishing with his friends, his friends and uh, his father and uh, his friend's fathers. They were actually a group of neighbors that got together and privately chartered the hub with Captain Sal and caught some nice red grouper and a bunch of other snapper species on their eight hour private charter and this is our good friend stella she just got a brand new fishing pole went out on the five hour half day and had a great time fishing with smoky and uh, smoky is a good friend of stella's parents and stella's friends and uh, stella caught her first fish on her brand new rod thanks to smoky nice little spot tail uh, she's working her way up next she's next time she's coming out she, I guarantee she's gonna catch herself a hogfish or something better great to see the young anglers out there fishing and getting hooked on fishing so let's see here what else do we have offshore let's go offshore and see what we've been catching offshore so the offshore bite's been going really well uh, especially once we were able to finally get out there uh, after that weather We've been seeing some nice grouper. The gag grouper have been biting well. We've been seeing some nice uh, red grouper. We've been seeing a few scamp grouper. Some nice uh, red snapper. The mangrove snapper bite was a little bit slow, unfortunately, on this, uh, this past, I guess it was a weekend trip. Today's Sunday, so Friday's trip, Friday's 39 hour, had a little bit of a slow mangrove bite. Uh, but these grouper made up for it in a big way. And they caught a nice boat limit of these big old red snappers. So that was cool to see. Uh, smooth dogfish shark. And uh, Jennifer Roberts here enjoying her birthday trip. Went out on a 39 hour trip with her husband Greg. And uh, she had a, uh, a good time uh, out on that 39 hour trip. 
some nice big old red snapper, some big red grouper, nice big red snapper, some beautiful fish. Mangrove bite, like I said, been a little bit spotty as of late. Definitely had to work for them. Some trips getting good mangrove bites, some trips getting tough mangrove bites, unfortunately. But some nice gag grouper in the mix to kind of shake things up and liven the trip. And these big red snapper haven't quit on us. Had to work for them a little bit, but catching boat limits of mang or red snapper at the end of July really really cool to see we got a big red snapper here and in the background someone's bowed up on another one so good to see the red snapper action and here's our friend estelle with uh a taxed red snapper it was a nice fish until the sharks got a hold of it unfortunately and that does occasionally happen unfortunately big big vermilion snapper another red snapper Happy anglers showing off lots of nice fish. Estelle with one of her gag groupers. Nice one there from Jeff Merker. Lots of beautiful fish. Nice mangrove. Nice red snapper. Here's a snapshot of that sailfish we caught and released. Nice red groupus. As you can see, the bite's been going well. Old jig head Ed. Big red snapper. Nice one there from Mike Upham. Ben Little Toro, Big Eye Toro, they call it, Monster Lane Snapper. Look at that sucker. Ben caught himself a nice mutton snapper. I think this was uh, two trips ago, so this would have been on last week's live show, but didn't have one last week, so put it on this week. Nice, big, beautiful mutton snapper, fat mangrove snappers, some nice red snappers some big gag groupers red groupers definitely been some good fishing going on out there good catching if you will uh so good to see the fishing going well behind this weather we definitely had some crazier weather than we would have liked lately but uh luckily we were able to overcome and still catch some nice fish let's see here uh, got through pretty much all our announcements. We talked about a little bit of everything, so I think it is time to get into your questions. But first, before we get to the questions, uh, we're going to go ahead and give away a free five hour fishing trip. A free five hour fishing trip for two guests coming at you now let's see who the lucky winner of the five hour trip is remember if you're picked as a lucky winner guys you have to text this phone number within about five minutes and you text the phone number with your home address so to claim your free trip text that phone number your home address in about five minutes so let's see who won the free fishing trip remember only text the phone number with your home address if you're picked as a lucky winner so let's see who has to text me. Sean Kelly from Louisville, Kentucky. You should claim your free trip now, Sean, by texting that phone number in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. That is how you claim your free trip if you're picked as the lucky winner. All right. Now, let's get into those questions and uh, see where this show is going to take us. Thanks, John Thomas Anderson, for sending us stars. Really appreciate it. 250 stars. Thanks, buddy. All right, let's see what questions we got tonight. Uh, what is the weather like? That is a great question. Uh, we could talk about weather for a while because the weather's kind of screwy as of late. Uh, luckily, look at this. This is the offshore forecast. This is the long range forecast look at all those days of beautiful weather finally knock on knock on wood keep your fingers and toes crossed say a little prayer we've got a nice little stretch here of some good fishing weather finally uh, really after tomorrow tomorrow's still kind of rainy a little bumpy two foot not bad but uh finally some nice weather coming up and uh Remember, you can always go to the weather uh, by going to the Hubbard's Marina face or the Hubbard's Marina 
uh, website. Scroll down there to the weather links page on our weather links page under fishing trips. You can get to where we check the weather for our trips. We just looked at the offshore report for the 12 and 39 hour areas. Let's look at the five hour near shore close to shore forecast and more of the same just really low wind conditions beautiful weather looking really good this week tuesday and thursday for the 10 hour all day so very excited about that now what we are keeping our eyes on closely is if you go to the hubbard's marina face or hubbard's marina website again messing that one up uh if you go to the hubbard's marina website and scroll down there to the it, the ultimate storm forecast Mike's weather page this thing is awesome I really like Mike's weather page and uh, this is where I spend a lot of my time this time of year monitoring the tropical systems that come into our area so the big thing we're watching is invest 92 this thing has been skipping around you can see the spaghetti models right now I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see them better the spaghetti models right now are looking favorable for this thing to just kind of skip around and totally miss everybody. So hopefully that stays the same. That's why the weather looks good all the way through the next week and a half. Um, because this morning it didn't look that way. It looked like the weather was going to go bad here in about 7 to 10 days. Because that these spaghetti models were all kind of aimed right at Florida about 8 to 10 hours ago. So... Luckily, it looks like the models are all forecasting this thing to kind of take a turn. What I like doing on Mike's weather page is going up here to the GFS. So when he does his live shows, he skips around really quickly, so it's kind of hard to follow. But right there, the GFS, that's what I like looking at. It's easiest to understand and follow. So I click this weather model, and it brings you to this page, and you can just click this arrow forward. And it advances it so you can see invest 92 right down here that low pressure system and that's the gfs model has that storm just skipping right along the coast and uh, dissipating so hopefully that will stay true because it gets really really strong here down before kind of cr cruising across the lesser antilles so Definitely keeping our eye on the weather to answer your question about the weather. <laughs> it is, uh, the weather is looking good right now and uh, it should be really nice the next five to seven days. Uh, now, if that Invest 92 changes past, that may or may not affect uh, the weather here in about seven to ten days so we don't have to worry about it just yet but definitely don't want to take your eyes off that storm uh, because those storm paths can change rapidly as you already saw this morning it was aimed right at the state of florida now it's going to totally miss florida so hopefully that will hold true let's see next question have you ever considered doing your sunday night show somewhere on the pier in front of a live audience think it would be a good time and might draw a crowd to promote business down at the shops. Now, I have considered it. I, we actually opened up that new location, uh, Hubbard's Marina East, inside John's Pass. And uh, I was actually kind of considering doing something there. The uh, only constraint is this setup that we have is not so mobile uh we had to build this custom computer or i shouldn't say we because i had literally nothing to do with this uh, but our 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 guru our tech guru website guy josh maloney uh ninja this computer together for me and uh it was it was expensive so i'm kind of scared to move it around too much and uh it needs some really good internet uh, here at my house, I spend quite a bit of money to get 300 meg internet. Um, we are getting fiber optic internet at the marina, so that might enable me to uh, do a live show at uh, the marina. Uh, so we're kind of experimenting, hopefully going to get some new uh, internet services at the marina. Fiber optic will definitely enable me to do the show at the marina, but right now, at the marina, the internet sucks. <laughs> and I definitely can't do a live show at the marina, but I have considered it, Al. 
we are working on some new options to kind of change it up because I would like to make the show more interactive. One of my one of my dreams uh, was to get Bass Pro uh, involved in this. I mean, I'm already working with Bass Pro on their pro staff. I would have loved to drive over to Bass Pro and do the live show at the fishing counter in Bass Pro, standing up. I'd be able to hold rods and reels, talk about the latest tackle. It'd be really, really cool. Um, but unfortunately, Bass Pro uh, won't even let me use their internet uh, during my uh, uh, events, my seminar events. So I highly doubt they let me use my inter their internet for their show. And uh, I doubt they have the crazy internet that's required in order to do these shows. But I would be highly interested in finding a place that would host... Uh, me or allow me to host these live shows uh, more publicly. So maybe maybe we'll find a home one of these days, Al. In your opinion, what is the best way to freeze fish and how does it taste compared to fresh? So freezing fish, in my opinion, is not the best way to go. But a lot of people don't have the flexibility or ability to go out fishing all the time and get fresh fish uh, i mean neither do i really <laughs> unfortunately sometimes if you're too busy to go fishing you're just too busy and sometimes running a fishing business i can be too busy unfortunately but um i always try to get the fresh fish that's that's where it's at you can't beat fresh fish if you freeze it it actually does change the cellular structure of the meat so when you freeze anything the actual cellular structure, those cells will uh, explode uh, as water freezes, it expands. Same thing inside those cells. There's water in that fillet and it makes this, the cells uh, explode and it changes the texture of the meat when you freeze it. Now, there are some ways around that by quick freezing, but not a lot of people have... Uh, the access to that kind of thing. One of the best things to do if you're gonna freeze your fish, if you're gonna go down that route, make sure you use a vacuum sealer. That changes the game. If you use a vacuum sealer, it definitely seals in the freshness a lot better. So if you're gonna freeze your fish, use either, uh, if you don't have access to a vacuum sealer, make sure you use some good Ziploc freezer bags and try to get all the air out before closing them up or go out and get yourself a vacuum sealer or if you want to make it really easy we just found out that our friends at Don's Dock inside John's Pass literally a stone's throw away from our dock at Hubbard's Marina Don's Dock is at the other end of the boardwalk so when you're standing in front of our office you can go up the stairs Take a left, walk to the bitter end of the boardwalk, and Don's Dock is right below you. Don's Dock offers to vacuum, seal, and freeze your fish, and they even offer shipping services because they have a commercial fishing dock and they sell fresh fish. Uh, so they sell commercially caught fresh fish, but you can take your recreationally caught fish from our boats and walk down to John's or Don's dock and they will vacuum seal and freeze your fish and ship it back to your house. Or if you're local, you can just take it down there and they'll vacuum seal it for you for you to take home and freeze. So definitely highly recommend the vacuum sealing method if you're gonna freeze fish. And uh, if you don't have a vacuum sealer, you can use uh, good uh, Ziploc bags, but you gotta get all the air out or just take it down to Don's Dock and let them do it for you. Uh, what is the best live bait and dead bait for snook fishing? Well, it's kind of uh, at your own discretion and experience. Everybody's kind of got their own favorite live bait for snook fishing. Uh, I would say one of my favorite live baits for nighttime snook fishing in the passes are those small pass crabs. Anywhere from like two inches to like four inches those pass crabs the snook love them especially up on top of the water with some light fluorocarbon cast one of those free lined into the pass and let it float through uh, it won't make it very far before a big snook comes and slurps it up or maybe even a tarpon um, 
Also, good live bait is just the good old shrimp. If you can find some big shrimp free lined on light tackle, works well. Uh, nice grass grunts or pig fish work really well for the snook. Uh, live bait options, small finger mullet, um, creek chubs, uh, pinfish. There's a lot of live bait options, but I would say the best would probably be a live uh, free line pig fish or that pass crab or a big live shrimp. Uh, as far as dead bait is concerned, cut ladyfish works well on the bottom, cut mullet. Uh, we've been catching a lot of big snook during the day at our dock using uh, gray snapper or white grunt carcasses, actual carcasses. The snook are sitting down there eating those carcasses. So uh, pretty interesting to see those big snook eat the carcasses. Uh, so a little bit of everything. Those snook are hungry right now, and they're loaded in the passes. So they're working really, they're eating well on that dead bait. During the day, dead bait on the bottom is definitely uh, the king. At night, they're more actively feeding when it's a little cooler. That current's moving. They're more up on the surface feeding more actively. So free line surface bait or one of those artificial lures like the mirror lure. Uh, mirror Dean XL is one of my favorites. The DOA shrimp, one of my favorites. Uh, a soft plastic paddle tail uh, also works really well. It's like a quarter ounce jig head. Uh, let's see what other questions do we have. Was told that some fishing charter captains, not Hubbard's Marina, don't let you keep the fish you catch. They keep them and sell those fish only to pay to fish. Is this true or false? Uh, and you only pay to fish, you don't get to keep your fish. Uh, that is true in certain fisheries, like uh, the bluefin tuna fishery. There's some certain fisheries where charter captains can legally sell their fish. And a lot of those fisheries and areas will uh, do some unique charters where they take clients out fishing. You pay to go fishing, and then you catch the fish, reel it in, and then the charter captain keeps the fish and sells it at market. Um, so you basically pay to be a deckhand on the party on the charter. Uh, so it's pretty interesting uh, approach. Uh, we don't do that in the state of Florida, really. The some dual chart, dual permitted charter captains can legally catch and sell kingfish. They do that in the Keys. Uh, they're trying to make that legal uh, in the South Atlantic for mahi mahi. Uh, so some. Some people do that if they can do it legally. You have to be dual permitted. We're not dual permitted. We're just strictly recreational. Thanks, David Fox, for sending some stars on Facebook. Appreciate it, buddy. Let's see what other questions do we have. Need weekend warriors that will block in... <laughs> Uh, something about pressure washing bandits need weekend warriors that will block in the pressure washing bandits next time. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Saturday mid morning, right when we start getting busy, we had some people pull up and essentially vandalized, but not really vandalized. They pulled up and, uh, they set some stencils down and they pressure washed the stencils. So they left a sign on the concrete at our front and back doors and made the front and back entrances of our marina office completely soaking wet and a tripping hazard it was super interruptive to our business and uh really kind of shut things down for a while as we had to close one side and clean it close the other side and clean it super annoying super frustrating and uh, i took my frustrations online and, and kind of complained that it happened uh and was annoyed because it was a political stunt by someone running for sheriff and uh, they turned around and attacked me. That was pretty cool. Uh, apparently, it's totally cool and totally okay uh, to attack small businesses and leave your graffiti, essentially, on the concrete as long as you're cleaning. Because they used a pressure washer, they were cleaning. And uh, I've even been threatened by the politician running for office that he's going to sue me unless I apologize. Because I was defaming his character so don't bring up the pressure washing thing it's a sore subject it's too soon <laughs> and if you're in pinellas county don't vote for james mcclennis for sheriff <laughs> or he might sue you apparently i'm getting sued but 
Happy birthday to your wife is the next question. I appreciate it, Estelle. I will tell her happy birthday for you. Um, she told me uh, right before I started the show not to talk about her birthday. So thanks, Estelle. <laughs> you got me in trouble, but it's all right. She won't find out. It'll be our secret, right, guys? Uh, next question. I bought a new reel and rod, hooks, line, sinker, and bait, and a venting tool for my 39-hour trip. Make sure you have the right kind of venting tool for after the trip, too. And uh, this bottle brought to me courtesy of Iron Shield Security. Iron Shield Security is the one who did all our camera systems uh, at Hubbard's Marina. I liked them so much. They did our security cameras at our Gulfport location, at our HM East location inside John's Pass. And I even brought them out to my house to get a camera system installed here. So Iron Shield Security are good people and uh, they are fans of the show. So they supplied me with a bottle of Jameson. But as you can see, uh, Renee, the owner... I unfortunately drank it a little too early, prematurely before the show. <laughs> so I went out and got another one. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. What other questions do we have? Oh, I skipped that one. Didn't answer it. Um, <laughs> so the person said, I bought a new rod, reel, hooks, line, sinker, bait, and venting tool for the 39-hour trip. And my wife wants to know, if I don't catch anything, will you buy them back? <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll take them on trade-in. We'll take them on trade-in. How about that? Um, now, I mean, on a 39-hour trip, as long as it's not your, your first ever offshore fishing trip, as long as you've done some trips, you've done a couple five hours, you've done a couple 10 hours, you've done a 12 hour, you shouldn't have that big of a learning curve on the 39 hour and you should go out there and catch plenty of nice fish. If it's a tough trip, you might struggle a little bit if you're not a super advanced angler, but you're still going to catch fish. It has to be a really tough trip, and you have to be a, a more uh, inexperienced angler to uh, not catch fish on a 39-hour trip. And honestly, if you know a little bit of anything about offshore fishing and you've done it once or twice, if you go on a 39-hour and don't catch fish, you really should give all your rods, reels, hooks, lines, leaders, and venting tools back. Because <laughs> it's just it doesn't happen. That's such a long trip with such a good amount of fishing time. That's what's so cool about the 39-hour trip is if the fishing's slow at night, maybe the sunrise bite's going to pop off. If it's slow at night and through sunrise, maybe midday's going to work out. If it's slow sunrise, midday, maybe that pre-night bite, that down, that uh, sundown bite's going to pop off. You never know. And the trick is to fish hard and fish dedicated throughout the entire trip. Uh, I can tell you on the last trip, uh, not the last trip, two trips ago with Captain Brian, it was a really slow night bite, really slow morning bite, really slow through the day. Through the day. And then all of a sudden towards the end of that second day, Captain Brian stumbled upon this area and the fish were just thick, like Almost 800 pounds of fish off one stop. Went and made another little stop close by and another huge number of fish. Ended up with a boat limit of snapper in essentially two fishing spots. So if you didn't fish hard, you ended up going to sleep and giving up, you wouldn't have caught anything. So as long as you fish hard through the trip, you stay dedicated and uh, continue to fish throughout the entire trip, it really only takes one spot to make the trip pop. Um, but hopefully it'll be steady action through the whole trip, but sometimes it is a little bit fishing and we got to work for them. So you never know. Thanks Haley Hetrick for the stars. Thanks David Fox for sending some more. I appreciate the stars guys. Uh, Hey Dylan, sorry. I didn't get there Thursday. I will get there in the fall. Pete from Cape Canaveral. We'll see you in the fall. Pete, thanks for uh, watching the show. Uh, next question, do you recommend pinfish for the 10-hour trip? Uh, the 10-hour trip, I mean, right now, this time of year, I might bring a dozen pinfish or so on a 10-hour trip. Uh, I would also bring some of those shrimp, maybe two dozen shrimp. Hogfish aren't going crazy, so you don't need a ton of shrimp. And uh, the pinfish, uh, we're not catching a ton of red grouper, so you don't need a ton of them either. But I would always recommend, I mean, you're going out there, you're going fishing, 
you're going 15 to 25 miles from shore. It would suck to get out there and all of a sudden the fish are biting on pinfish and you don't have any. Or all of a sudden the mangrove snappers start biting on shrimp and you don't have any. So I always tell people kind of be prepared, but don't go overboard. No, no need for multiple dozens of pinfish or 10 dozen shrimp per person. Just need enough so that way if the fish are biting one bait or another, you have access to it and uh, uh, you don't get left out of the bite. The African I Pompano I caught with you guys was, am was amazing eating. How often are they caught? Never see it for sale in the store. Uh, African pompano aren't for sale in the store because there's not really a commercial market for them. There's not a directed fishery for African pompano. Same reason why you don't you don't see hogfish in the store too much or lionfish. Lionfish and hogfish are some of the best eaten fish out there, but you don't see them in the store a lot because there's not a directed fishery for them because you can't catch them uh, in commercially viable quantities uh, via hook and line. So all the hogfish that you see in the shop in a commercial uh, fishery market is uh, spearfished. Same thing with lionfish. Any lionfish that are in uh, fish markets are spearfished. Uh, African pompano are the same. The only way you can get a good number of African pompano is through spear fishing. And uh, African pompano have very strict regulations here in the state of Florida. You're only allowed two per boat, even on a multi-day trip. So that's why you don't see a ton of African pompano. Uh, we catch them from time to time, especially when we're fishing around springs and wrecks. So uh, amberjack season is when we catch a lot of African pompano because we're fishing springs and wrecks more often. And uh, they're oftentimes off the bottom, anywhere from 30 to 60 feet feet off the bottom. They bite vertical jigs, they bite knocker rigs, or they'll bite that good old mangrove snapper double snell thread fin plug. A lot of times I'll catch those African pompanos by dropping down to the bottom and then reeling up about 10-15 cranks with my Daiwa Saltiga, which gets me about 30 feet off the bottom, 40 feet off the bottom, and uh, it, I end up catching one that way. So you never know when you're going to catch them or how you're going to catch them, but springs artificial wrecks definitely where we see those african pompano the most and we almost always see them up off the bottom jordan prince thanks for sending 150 stars Dottie walford thanks for sending some stars gabe 500 stars really appreciate it buddy thank you so much justin bendis with 100 stars thanks buddy appreciate it uh, do you do day trips for sailfish tuna and when would be the best time to set up a trip? Uh, we don't really do day trips for pelagic species here in central West Florida. If you want to do a day trip for sailfish, the closest place to do that viably would be down in the Keys. Uh, my buddy, uh, excuse me. Uh, Kayvon Martin, uh, no wait, Kayvon Maroney, sorry. <laughs> Kayvon Maroney with uh, Florida Keys Vacation Getaway would be a great option. Uh, go down there and uh, do a charter trip with him, and uh, he could get you set up with a day trip for sailfish and tuna. Um, here in Central West Florida, we mainly focus on bottom fishing. Uh, pelagic fish like sailfish, tuna, that kind of thing are mostly a bycatch that we catch while trolling on the way out on our 39 or 44 hour trips, or we catch them on the flat line while deep sea fishing on the bottom. All right, let's see what other questions. Oh, it's getting kind of late. I think it's time to do a uh, 10 hour all day trip giveaway. So we did our five hour half day trip giveaway. Let's do a 10 hour all day trip giveaway. All right, so the lucky winner of our 10 hour all day trip is uh, Ingrid Stadler Calloway from Louis Louisville, Kentucky. That is, that is the second Louisville, Kentucky winner. Louisville's a lucky center, lucky city tonight. That was pretty cool. Never seen that before. The lucky name generator is picking Louisville winners. All right, so 
Ingrid Callaway, make sure you go ahead and text that phone number in the upper right hand corner, uh, your home address to claim that free trip. In order to claim the free trip, you do have to text that phone number in about five minutes uh, to claim that free trip. All right, let's get back into the questions. Uh, what's biting really near shore, say out 25 to 30, uh, I assume that means foot. I can't really read the rest of that question, but uh, right now uh, we are seeing some of those really 25 to 30 foot. We're not even fishing that shallow on our half day trips. Our half day trips were fishing probably right around 35 to 40 foot or more, uh, really close to shore in our direct area. That red tide really took a toll on it. That red tide back in 2017, 2018 really decimated our close to shore bottom. So we're starting our half day trips 10, 12, 14 miles from John's Pass, fishing deeper waters for the most part. Um, but around 40 foot, we're seeing those uh, gray snapper or white grunts. We're seeing a lot of those, some porgies. We're seeing a few hogfish here and there. Uh, they're definitely trickier this time of year for sure. Uh, and then we are also seeing uh, the occasional uh, lane snapper or mangrove snapper. But uh, most of the time, you're catching those white grunts or gray snapper out there in that depth of water, which are great eating fish, don't get me wrong, uh, but just nothing real big to write home about. Thanks, Anthony Barnes and Sean Porchke for sending some stars. Appreciate it, guys. What, what's the best red snapper bait you use offshore? Uh, one of my favorite red snapper baits offshore is just fishing that mangrove snapper bait uh that thread fin plug with the double snail hooks uh that's one of my favorite ways to target uh mangrove snapper and a lot of times we just stumble into those red snapper on that same dead cut bait um, but the live pinfish is a good option for the red snapper uh, we also do really well on the red snapper using cut uh bonita strips um, so those would be my main options, dead uh, cut thread fins or cut bonita strips or a live pinfish would be the best options for red snapper right now. And red snapper season is only through this week. So red snapper ended for private recreational anglers on private boats at the end of day, July 25th. So yesterday was the last day for private recreational anglers on private boats in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Florida. However, on our federal for hire charter boats and party boats, the last day is August 1st, uh, end of day. So that is the last day on our boats that you can catch a red snapper. So only one more week for red snapper. Watching from Fort Myers, what do you guys do when there's a hurricane coming right at John's Pass, well, it's a lot of freaking work. <laughs> what we do with our boats, anything uh, that's small, we pull out of the water and put on land, uh, which is just one boat. That's our skiff, our, our, our runaround maintenance boat. Uh, anything larger in the 40 to uh, 45, 46 foot, our charter boats, our dolphin boats, our... Uh, ferry boats we take over to our hurricane hole uh, which is essentially my dad's house he lives on the back of a canal and uh, we take all the boats and uh, we our neighbors love us and uh, we ask permission uh, but we web all our boats across all the back docks in this canal and uh, lots of lines and lots of maintenance and then someone stays with the boats to monitor the lines through the storm our two big boats, the Florida and Friendly, stay at the dock, and we have a crew standing by on those boats, two captains, two crew, and uh, we hang out and uh, um, try to keep it professional, <laughs> and we watch the lines and monitor the boats during the storm because you have to change the uh, dock lines depending on if the tide's coming in or tide's going out. We have to adjust those lines, so... That's what we do during hurricanes uh, at Hubbard's Marina, and it's always a challenge. And my dog is barking, and I'm really hoping he's not waking up my son. 
Oh, it's my wife coming home. We're all good. <laughs> all right. So good question about the hurricanes. Hopefully we won't find out. Hopefully we won't have any hurricane issues here soon because it, like I said, is a lot, a lot of work and it's no fun. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so the next question is a little longer. Um, we did a 12 hour extreme this month and it was our first time catching a bonita. Can you touch on catching a bonita and why or why aren't they worth keeping? Richie cut mine up to use it as bait. Uh, it paid off because I caught a couple big red snapper with it and some people wanted to keep their bonita. I know they aren't ideal to catch when you're going after grouper, snapper, mangroves, gags, but we had an awesome time just wondering why we didn't get to keep our uh, bonita. If it was me and I caught a bonita, I would 100% immediately cut it up for bait. Um, bonita, to me, is best used as bait. It's kind of like octopus. Octopus is really good. You could take it home and make ceviche with it. You could boil it and make some really good dishes with it. I love grilled octopus. Uh, so definitely octopus is really good to take home and eat, but I would never ever do it because it's a lot of work. It's messy and it's a pain in the butt and I'd rather use it for bait because it's a killer, killer grouper bait and snapper bait, especially fresh octopus. Same with bonita. You can eat a bonita, and uh, they are good eating, uh, but you got to bleed them. you got to soak them in milk. you got to really work to prep them. You can use them for tuna fish. Uh, my dad did that one time, and our house stunk like bonita, uh, rotten bonita, really, for almost two days. My mom and my dad fought the entire time. It was, it was awesome. <laughs> so, you can take them home and make tuna fish with it, but just keep in mind uh, you need to be single and you need to have some understanding neighbors. Um, you can also cook bonita. Uh, some people uh, sushimi their bonita up just like blackfin tuna. They are tough though. They, they have a very strong taste, a very big bloodline. So the trick to bonita is immediately bleeding them very, very well then getting them really, really cold, and then essentially only the back strap is the good edible part of the fish. The rest of it, free, cut it up, strip it up, and use it for bait next time you go out. So to me, it's a lot of work. It's not really worth it. Bonita's bait to me. But everybody has that fish that they say is really good eating. Other people frown upon eating. For example, Jack Curvell. Some people really like eating Jack Curvell. Me, not in a million years. I wouldn't eat a Jack Curvell. Uh, but you, you never know. There's, there's some fish that people consider trash fish or bait that other people do enjoy eating. So it's kind of up to you. One of those fish uh, that some people don't want to bother with is a lionfish. Never give your lionfish away. They are incredibly good eating. Like a mix between hogfish, scamp grouper, and... A lobster <laughs> it's, it's crazy uh, really really good good eating fish are those lion fish do you get tile fish on your deep drop trips we don't really deep drop uh, we do our 39 and 44 hour trips and we fish 120 to about 250 foot of water so those aren't deep drop trips deep drop fishing is past 350 400 foot up to about uh, a thousand foot. We don't do those deep drop trips um, anymore. So uh, deep drop fishing, we did that on our 63 hour trips. Uh, but the thing with the 63 hour is we'd have to essentially cancel uh, a 10 hour all day. We'd have to cancel two half days and then r cancel a 39 hour trip to run a 63 hour. And we can only take up to 18 people, and the weather had to be absolutely perfect. So we were we were scheduling two, three, four, 63-hour trips a year, and we were lucky to run maybe one or two at most. We're only making 18 people happy in a shot. Most of those trips only had 12, 10, 12 people on it. So instead of taking a, uh, a nice 10-hour all day, two nice half days, and making 20, 25, 30 people happy on a 39-hour, we're only making 12 happy on a 63-hour. And most of the time, we were pissing 12 people off by canceling a 63-hour. And they had gone out and bought electric reels and all this tackle. So it just it wasn't good. 
from a customer service aspect and uh, we're running p way past fish to go find fish uh, we were catching plenty of fish and it was a good time uh, but in my opinion it's just not worth it and that's why we don't offer those 63 hour trips anymore Anthony Barnes appreciate the stars thanks man all right, but we did get tilefish on the deep drop trips to answer your question. Is, Tuesday th is Tuesday's 39-hour trip going to be affected by weather? No, we looked at the weather early, earlier in the show. Tuesday's trip looks really, really nice weather-wise. Speaking of weather, does the rain seem to dictate if fish are biting or do particular fish bite during the rain, some more than others? Offshore, not so much. Uh, once you're past 60, 100 foot of water, I really don't, I don't think the fish even know it's raining. Now, if it's rough and the, the water's getting stirred up, then yeah, they would notice uh, a lot of fresh water and the salinity level changing. They would notice that at the bottom, but definitely not offshore. The fish don't really give a rip if it's raining or not. Now, sometimes they do bite better in the rain. Because a lot of times before one of those low pressure systems, before a tropical system, we'll get those feeder bands out in front of it. And the fish really, really bite well uh, as those low pressures approach. So uh, definitely uh, we'll sometimes see some good bites of fish in the rain. But it doesn't have anything to do with the rain so much as it does with the barometer changing in my opinion. What is the weight of the biggest red snapper caught this year? The biggest one at Hubbard's Marina was close to 23 pounds. It was caught on the Flying Hub 2. That, that has caught the biggest red snapper. I think it was Captain Joe caught the biggest one so far. What's the name of that weather site again? Well, right on our website. Always and everything is right at hubbardsmarina.com. Under fishing trips, scroll down to the weather links page. Once you're on the weather links page, right down towards the bottom, as I assume the weather uh, page that you're asking about is the ultimate storm forecast. It's Mike's weather page. This literally has anything and everything you could possibly ever want. Uh, global weather wise when i say global weather wise it's kind of directed at america or north america um but it is everything more high level what the prog charts are doing this is what i look at pretty much every day or these are called prog charts issued by noaa updated by noaa every four to eight hours uh really really important stuff if you know what you're looking at prog chart wise and then as tropical systems approach uh great information site for all the different spaghetti models and upper level radars and steering and tons and tons of information mike's weather page or spaghetti models.com but you can find it right on our hubbard's marina uh weather links page right at the bottom one of my favorite. Check them out on Facebook too. Mike's weather page. You can find him real easy. He's a Tampa resident. He does live videos all the time. And uh, he's really, really entertaining. Uh, he's sponsored by ABC Liquor. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll get there. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Next question. Uh... I can never get Facebook Live to work, but finally found you on YouTube. Sorry to hear that. Uh, I went on a charter, not at Hubbard's Marina, and they told us to vent our red snapper by poking a hole in its stomach sticking out of its mouth. And then I saw your video saying that was not good. That is terrible. Hate to hear that a charter somewhere told you to do that and that it was okay. Definitely the absolute wrong way to vent the fish. And remember... If you want to learn how to vent a fish, not vent yourself, as we do that with our Jameson, but vent a fish, go to hubbardsmarina.com, click fishing trips, click long range, go over to that 39 or 44 hour page. Either one will have it on the right hand side down here below that little uh, picture slideshow thing is 
nope, got to scroll down a little bit more. Underneath our videos, <laughs> you're going to see the uh, Salt Strong article, How to Vent a Fish. And right here on this page, it'll show you where to vent the fish. You want to, this video is about uh, two years old, and uh, we were using uh, kind of the pectoral fin towards the tip of the pectoral fin. You lay the pectoral fin down and vent like kind of close to the tip. Now they're saying you want to go closer to the base of the pectoral fin. So now I'm venting a little bit further up, kind of like right in here is where I would vent the fish. Uh, but the venting. Uh, there's the pectoral fin. The pectoral fin's the side. The venting spot is uh, anywhere from the base of the pectoral fin all the way out to the tip. You can still use the tip if you want, but if you get closer to the base of the pectoral fin, uh, that about a third of the way down, a uh, third of the way down the pectoral fin is about the sweet spot where you're most likely not going to hit any other essential organs in that fish. Never want to poke the stomach coming out of the mouth of the fish. That is the worst place to vent a fish. And there's a video down here on how to vent a fish. If you really, really want to learn how to vent the fish, check it out. Oh, got to click back to the webcam. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Uh, how did you do on your 39 hour last week? Uh, unfortunately, uh, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. And luckily, I wasn't too busy. I made time to go out on that 39 hour trip on July 19th. We canceled the live show. I got all ready. I packed my truck, went to Publix, went to the went to Publix and <laughs> went to uh, my buddies at Dogfish Tackle, got all prepped for the trip, got all my food, all my coolers packed, and uh, got to the marina. Uh, and unfortunately, the boat came in off a five-hour morning trip, and we were getting ready to start getting it ready for our 39-hour private charter with some good friends. And uh, we were having some injector issues. And Cat uh, Diesel, shout out to Cat marine technicians and cat diesel mechanics because it was sunday at at 11 a.m noon we were able to call cat diesel and they pulled their master mechanic out of church he stepped out of his baptist church and his church outfit went to the office and looked to see if they had the part on the shelf they had the uh, mechanic tech come in on a sunday to meet him at the shop if they had the tool they were going to come down and uh, put the part into the boat on sunday at noon that is a beautiful thing got two mechanics at cat diesel to come in on a sunday and get ready to drive out to saint pete an hour and a half drive to fix our boat on the fly that is some good service at cat uh so shout out to caterpillar and uh, the good guys over there at Ring Haver Cat, and all the good things they do for us to keep us running. But unfortunately, they didn't have the part in stock, so we got it overnighted from Atlanta. It was there Monday morning, got the part in the boat, and got it running for Tuesday's trip. So then I was planning on going on Tuesday's 39 hour. Uh, I was going to sneak on and stow away on that trip, but then I had to cancel it due to weather. So didn't go Sunday because of mechanical issues. Couldn't go Tuesday because of weather issues. And now I'm stuck on shore. <laughs> but we got to do our live show, so it's not that bad. So to answer your question, my 39-hour trip sucked. Because <laughs> I didn't get to go. Can you freeze your fish in water? I've heard people doing that. I've tried it before. It kind of messed up the fillets. It kind of washed the meat out. In my opinion... When you fillet your fish, you rinse them down uh, good enough to where you get the blood and the scales and all that stuff off it. But I don't over rinse my fish. If you over rinse the fillets, in my opinion, you're kind of rinsing off too much of that slime coat, and it, the the feet the fish don't last as well. They don't hold as well. So I just get them barely clean enough to where when I open the bag at home, my wife doesn't kill me. Uh, that's that's the trick, uh, and that. That, in my opinion, holds that slime coat and it keeps those fish a little fresher and they preserve a little better and they taste better when you eventually do cook them. Then when you take them out of the fridge, you give them a good rinse in before you 
right before you cook them, but you leave a good amount of that slime coat on them while you got them in the fridge or freezer. Anthony Barnes, thanks for sending more stars, buddy. Let's see here. You said a couple weeks ago you're six foot five. Did you play football or basketball? Um, six foot seven, three hundred and thirty pounds. Believe it or not, I'm a big boy. <laughs> I eat a lot of food, <laughs> and uh, ironically, didn't really play too many sports. I played football and basketball, um, but then once I got older into kind of my junior year of uh, high school, I kept hurting myself. I was growing at a ridiculous rate, so. Freshman year, I had Osgood slaughters in both knees. Sophomore year, I came down off a dunk, and my heel bones just completely slid off my growth plate because uh, my I was growing so fast. My growth plates were so big, my heel bone just completely slid off the growth plate. And then uh, going into my junior year, I tore my MCL, PCL, and ACL, again, playing basketball. And at that point, I got really into weightlifting and uh, pretty much gave up on football and basketball. So I did a lot of weightlifting and did a lot of fishing and uh, did a lot of stupid high school boy stuff. <laughs> and uh, and now all I do is fish. I don't, I don't work out anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What other questions do we have? How does East Coast bait transition over to the Gulf of Mexico for snapper and grouper such as fresh goggle eyes or ballyhoo? Um, that's a good question. A lot of guys try to bring over the goggle eyes and ballyhoo. In my opinion, I wouldn't really mess with it too much. The ballyhoo does work really well. The mangrove snapper love cut ballyhoo. Uh, red snapper love cut ballyhoo. I've seen grouper caught on it, but in my opinion, it's a lot easier and cheaper just to use the thread fins that we provide on the boat, and they do well. Some people will spend the extra money to get frozen sardines or frozen cigar minnows, and those work pretty well as well. Um, but the thread fins that we provide on the boat is normally what I use when I'm going out there on the 39 hour, and I, I do pretty well for myself. Uh, so it, it all depends, personal preference, but... Uh, sometimes it does help to have that unique bait that no one else uses. Sometimes that'll all it takes is to uh, get those fish chewing is that unique bait that they haven't seen before. So I'm not saying don't bring the ballyhoo or goggle eyes, um, but are they the secret weapon? I wouldn't say so either. Lori Reinhardt, Glenn Brown, really appreciate the stars. Thank you guys. How is the weather in the middle of October offshore? Uh, ultimately, uh, October is the last month of the hurricane season, so it kind of depends on the hurricanes and then also the cold fronts. October is one of those months where hurricane season is coming to a close and the uh, cold fronts start. Once hurricane season closes, those hurricane or those cold fronts start, so it can be really, really nice. Uh, at the end of hurricane season before the cold front start or it could be really really terrible with a late season cold or a late season hurricane uh, or an early season cold front that's super super strong so how is the weather in the middle of october offshore i have no idea what 2020 is going to bring us <laughs> at the rate we're going this year I have no idea, <laughs> but generally the first two weeks of October are really, really nice. If we don't have a hurricane, uh, the first two weeks of October, are almost my favorite time of the year, the, the, uh, first two weeks of April into mid or first two weeks of May, first two weeks of October are generally some of the best weather that we have that transitional period. Um, first two weeks of May, the cold fronts of have stopped or are stopping and it's not too hot yet but it hasn't hasn't really uh transitioned into that summertime heat first two weeks of october we're finally getting a break on the summertime heat uh and the cold fronts haven't really gotten hot and heavy yet so it all depends on the weather though sometimes those first two weeks of october that i really love really love happen the first two weeks of november sometimes they happen the first uh two weeks of september it just depends on the weather and how uh, those patterns affect us but just stay tuned and we'll let you know Gabe thank you again buddy for sending some more stars 500 stars you're the man that makes a thousand for the show Gabe really appreciate it buddy all right let's see here 
what is the next question? Uh, what fish will you target after August 1st besides amberjack? Well, everything is open uh, in uh, August except for those red snapper. And uh, trigger fish uh, are going to be closed as well. They, they might open trigger fish. There was a question about that, but I highly, highly doubt it. So um, basically everything's open after August 1st except for red snapper and trigger fish. So we got uh, gag grouper, red snap, red grouper, scamp grouper, mangrove snapper, porgies, yellowtails, uh, all the other fish that we catch. So there's tons of fish out there, tons and tons of fish to be caught. Uh, once red snapper closes it always kills me it always it always makes me laugh that in red snapper season june and july we have all these people from all over that don't fish any other time of year they're they only come out when red snappers open and all the rest of the year august september october november december january february march april may we have tons of great fishing tons of great trips and they're lighter loads. During June and July, we're carrying 45, 50 people. Uh, the first trip in August, we have 18 people going out on that 39-hour trip. Just a super light load. Great opportunity to catch plenty of fish. Lots of one-on-one -on -one help with the crew. And the boat's empty. The boat's empty. Great time to try those slow-pitch vertical jigs. Great time for me to stow away and try some uh, trips of myself. Uh, so really, really cool to see those super light trips starting in August. So for example, August 4th, we've got 20 people. August 11th, we've got 16 people. August 7th is a Friday trip, only got 23 people on it. So super light loads coming up in August. Great opportunity to go out there and catch tons of fish and have a good time doing it. And it gives you a break from those red snapper chaotic trips where we've got 50 people or 40 people going out fishing. Glenn Brown, thank you. 795 stars. And I know you sent me a few others as well. So really appreciate you, buddy, for doing that. Thank you so much. Let's see here. I think we got time for one more question. Then we're going to wrap this thing up. Due to COVID, are you making any exceptions for expiration dates on gift certificates? Hoping this clears up f before November. Uh, we are not making any crazy exceptions for gift certificates. Uh, we were, if your gift certificate expired when we were closed back in March, April, we were extending it a little bit, but we've been open since May 4th and running trips, so we're not really making any crazy exceptions on gift certificates because hopefully you didn't lose that much time and uh, we're hurting pretty bad here at Hubbard's Marina trying to recover ourselves so hopefully you can come out and visit us and use that gift certificate that you purchased uh, with us and uh, we'd love to have you we'd love to have you all visit I really appreciate y'all hanging out and joining us for the show and uh, thank you, Lori Reinhardt, Anthony Barnes, and Lori, again, Lori, 400 stars total. Really appreciate you, Anthony Barnes. I know you've sent me a few already. Appreciate you as well. Let's see here. We talked about uh, the webcams are back up and running. Again, on our website, you can navigate to those webcams by going to info. Under info, you can click the webcams. And right on the webcams, you can view the dock or the big fish weigh-in. The big fish weigh-in is going to give you a perfect view of that big fish weigh-in that we do every Sunday morning when the 39 hour gets back or Tuesday morning. So if you view this Tuesday morning at around 6 a.m., you're going to see that big fish weigh-in. You can also go back to the webcams and view the fishing boat unloading. And you'll be able to see all the guys and gals coming off that 39-hour trip with their fish. You can also help me keep an eye on the dock and let me know if we have any trespassers at night. <laughs> if you want to sit on the webcams all night with me <laughs> and help us keep an eye on the dock. You can do so from home now. So the webcams are back up and running. Make sure you take advantage of those. Again, shout out to Iron Shield Security. Local Clearwater owned or Clearwater based 
uh, really, really cool, cool people. Iron Shield Security. If you need webcams, security cameras, security systems, Iron Shield Security does it all. Gabe, a thousand stars, man. You're the you're, you're the man. That makes two thousand for tonight's show. Really appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lewis Chris, for sending stars as well. Let's see here. I think we have covered everything tonight. Don't forget to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Don't forget to like us if you're watching on Facebook. Uh, really, really appreciate you guys. And um, let's go ahead and see who won that free 39-hour fishing trip. We didn't have a ton of viewers tonight. I think that was because we missed last week and kind of lost a little bit of momentum and that's my fault. I wanted to go fishing, so I lost some momentum. I think we had about 400 live viewers tonight uh, between Facebook and YouTube, which isn't bad. I'm not complaining, but, I mean, we've been getting up to five, 600 live viewers. And uh, one week off. I took one week off, and I don't know what happened to some of you guys. We're going to have to have a talk about that. <laughs> All right, let's see who won a free 39-hour trip for one person. Don't forget, if you're picked as the lucky winner, you got to text that phone number in about five minutes to claim your free trip. So let's see who the lucky winner of one free 39-hour fishing trip is. Marcus Vaughn. Marcus Vaughn with that lucky win on the 39-hour fishing trip. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. Make sure you check out our Friday morning Fox 13 news segments on the Good Day Tampa Bay uh, show. Uh, every Friday morning, 8.15 a.m., you can catch us live on Fox 13 News. Come out and see us for one of those August 39-hour trips or an August 12-hour extreme trip. Tons of room, great fishing, great opportunities to get out in the water. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon for one of our great uh, opportunities to go out there and catch fish. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week for another great show every Sunday night right here live on the Hubbard Sparina Facebook and YouTube channel. And uh, until next week, y'all have a great night. Thanks for watching.